This is the Rush Hour on Channel 500. I'm Megan Barnard. Well, first to this morning's big story, and Anthony Mundine has proved age is no issue. Sergei Rabchenko last night finding out the hard way. Mundine not short on confidence. Nice. Not that he ever is. And a beautiful shot from Mundine, who says I'm not finished yet. Hurt for the first time in the yes. fight here. New champion from Sydney, Anthony Mundine. At this stage of my career, it is, it is a great, great fight. And, and uh, I worked hard for this fight. I really believe I can beat him. Yes, for some, it is the best win of his career. And for more, here's Matt Russell, along with two men who have followed the man's career very closely. Good on you, Megan. Yes, a good night for Aussie boxing. A great night for Anthony Mundine. We're joined by boxing commentator Paul Upham and former IBF featherweight champ Billy Dibb. Gents, thanks for coming in. You can tell when it's been a special night for Australian boxing because Paul Upham puts his dance shoes on. Those brilliant <laughs> red boots tell us that you have something to celebrate, Paul, because you really enjoyed that last night, didn't you? Oh, I did. We need this so badly for Australian boxing. We've had a terrible year. Lost our two world champions in Sam Solomon and Saki Obika. We've had a lot of losses overseas and we needed a big international win and it was and it was Anthony Mundine's best win in my opinion since he beat Daniel Gill in 2009 he was absolutely on song last night his punching was clean it was accurate and the hand speed at the age of 39 it was just incredible great performance Billy good fight great fight I thought he uh, I thought he ex executed a great plan you know I, I, I told him in the lead up that he needed to be very strategic in his plan and uh, you know he, he needed to be smart and he, he was exactly that he made sure that uh, Rupchenko didn't hit him too clean early and uh, you know he had the high guard and he fought really smart and he pulled off a great victory. He won with a split points decision, the right decision? Uh, I don't think it should have been a split points de decision to be honest. I th when they read the scorecards out after eight rounds I thought he was more ahead on points but uh, you know that's, that's the way boxing goes with the judging and then you know I think the right man got the decision. I think Anthony Mundine landed the cleaner punches. Uh, although he was hurt on a few occasions, I, I still thought that he was doing enough with the jab, landing some really clean right hands, and uh, you know I, I think the uh, the right punches that he landed, you know, gave him the tally and the scores. Paul, should it have been unanimous? Yeah, it was seven rounds to five. I, I agreed with that. One judge had it eight rounds to four, and the European judge had it seven five to Rabchenko. But I thought the first four rounds were really close either way, and I think that's where Anthony Mundine actually won it. The last eight rounds were pretty clear. They were either a Rabchenko round or Mundine. Round 10, Anthony Mundine was really hurt. The only time in the fight he was really hurt. But his defence was so precise to get through that. And he actually was able to attack back at the end. But he copped a punch right under the chin, Billy. And you could yeah. see his legs went a little bit. He covered up. Uh, but he did exactly what he had to do to survive. Because, and that showed you how dangerous Rabchenko was. I want to put it in perspective. Rabchenko unbeaten in 25 bouts before last night. 18 wins by KO. The bookies had him a $1.24 favourite to win as opposed to Anthony's $4. You had a lot to do with uh, Anthony Billy before the fight. Was he nervous? Was he apprehensive? We know he puts on a front for the cameras, but how was he before the fight? He was extremely confident. He, was, he had a quiet confidence about himself. He'd actually travelled to America. He'd done exactly what he needed to do to prepare to win this fight. He went to America, he got great sparring with um, uh, Rubio, who was a heavy-handed guy. Rubio had, uh, you know, there was word coming back from America that Anthony Mundine was having his way with Rubio, and, um, you know, it showed in the fight. I think uh, Anthony executed, executed a great game plan. And, uh, he just, you know, what people need to understand is, although Rebchenko has uh, 25 wins and 18 KOs, he really wasn't tested at the same level, that level that Anthony Mundine was. You know, Anthony Mundine had been in there with some great opposition like Miguel Kessler, uh, you know, uh, Danny Greens, Vernotki, all these guys who had so much experience in the world of boxing. Rebchenko was only a baby compared to Mundine in terms of experience, and uh, that showed last night. A much different Anthony Mundine than the man beaten by Josh Cloddy Paul. And I think that's where the doubt came from. We looked at his last fight loss right. and he looked terrible against Joshua Cloddy. Now, Cloddy's an A-class fighter and Anthony Mundine has been an A-class fighter. But that loss put doubt in everybody's mind at the age of 39. Could he do it? And, and Billy's made a great point. Rebchenko was tested. He, he's stepping up a level and he never fought anyone with the style of Anthony Mundine. And Billy, we know that he has a unique style and you don't get to be able to prepare for that sort of Anthony Mundine style. The moves and the hand speed, particularly at 39 years yeah. of age. I think he was... He, I, uh, Rupchenko definitely underestimated the hand speed that Anthony Mundine was going to have. And look, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to put it out there. The, the man who prepared for 
Ravchenko was a different man to prepare for Clotty. You know, it was it was chalk and cheese. Anthony really prepared for Ravchenko. He went overseas, he got the right sparring. He did what he had to do to win the fight. Against Clotty, he stayed at home, sparred with regular people. You know, the guy even wore shoes in the ring. Box, he didn't even wear boxing shoes on the night of the fight. So it just shows that he came prepared for this fight. He knew that it was all or nothing. His career was on the line. You know, had he lost yesterday, where, where does he go from there? I'm glad you said career on the line because I'm sure most Australians watched last night thinking they were seeing the final bout for Anthony Mundine. Given the way he won last night and given that 39 is relatively young compared to some boxers, could this be the start of a second career for Anthony Mundine? Well, I think it's a second win. You know, I think um, Anthony's had a, a long career in boxing. You know, he's, he's been boxing since uh, 2000. And, uh, you know, he says he's a young 39. So, you know, I mean, I, I guess look, looking at Bernard Hopkins, he's fought until he's 49 and turning 50. But, um, you know, I don't think, I don't expect Anthony Mundine to do that. And as he said yesterday, he's only in it for a little bit longer. He wants a couple more fights, make a couple more millions, you know. And he's chasing the big fight against um, Floyd Malva. Does that happen off this win? No, it doesn't. But there's a possibility that it could set up a fight against, say, uh, Miguel Cotto or a, uh, you know, a, a Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez. That's a fight that could catapult him into a fight with Floyd Mayweather. Has, you know, if he has a good performance against one of those guys and beats him comprehensively, then he does. 53 bouts, 47 wins, 27 by KO. He's had the six losses. He wants to go to the States. He wants that pot of gold, as he told Ben Damon in the ring after the bout last night. Uh, a Fox Sports News poll has 85% of Australians expect him not to fight Floyd Mayweather. Paul, do you? Look, Floyd Mayweather's pound for pound number one. He's the top of the tree. He picks and chooses. He did say last night, Anthony, that Canelo Alvarez uh, is an option. And to me, that's his best opportunity to get a big fight. He beat the brother, Rigoberto Alvarez, in 2011. Beat him on points. And to, if I'm uh, Anthony Mundine's team today, Coda Nass has got to get on the phone to Golden Boy Promotions, ring Oscar De La Hoya, Coda's got the phone number, and say, put us on that list for Canelo Alvarez. Now, Alvarez is going to fight in May, probably against Miguel Cotto. So Mundine probably would get Alvarez straight away. But he's got to get his name over there, say, we want this fight. And with the WBC diamond tile around his waist, it's the perfect opportunity to get Alvarez. And you've got to have a storyline. And the storyline is revenge of the brother. I'm sure Coda has that number. We've been speaking all about Mundine because he deserves that today, but let's finish with you, Billy. You've got a bout coming up early December. Where, when, against who? Well, I'm fighting at the Hurstville Entertainment Centre on December the 6th, and uh, I'll be facing a Brazilian, uh, Eduardo Reyes, who has a record of 16 wins, 11 knockouts, and uh, two defeats. He's a, he's a tough guy, and um, we're going to be facing off for the uh, WBO Asian Pacific title and the PABA title. I'm currently rated number six in the world with the WBO, number six with the WBA, and number ten with the IBF. So in the not-too-distant future, we're looking to um, you know, possibly get another crack at a world title and bring it home. Well, gents, thanks very much for coming in. I know you are genuinely excited by Anthony's win last night. It's a good night for Australian boxing. We look forward to having more stories like this as the months unfold. Megan, back to you. Yeah, thanks very much, Maddie. You too, boys.